Hi, my name is Willie Farrell. I'm a senior software engineer in the IBM Developer Skills team. This demo is the second in a nine-part series that supplements the Developer Works live briefing, Architecture, Design, and Construction using the IBM Rational Software Delivery Platform. In this series, you will see the demos that are performed as part of the live presentation of that briefing. In this demo, you will see some of the features of the UML modeling capabilities of the Rational Architecture tools. In the demo, I use Rational Software Architect, but all of the features you see in this demo are also in Rational Software Modeler and Rational Systems Developer. The first thing we need to do is to create a project for our UML model. Right-click anywhere in the Project Explorer view, select New, Project, select UML Project, and click Next. We'll name the project My Project. Note that the default location for the project is in the workspace folder that you indicated at startup. Also note that you can choose not to create a UML model in the project, though it is typical that you would create a model when creating a UML project. The model can be created using a standard template, which you will see on the next screen, or by using an existing model to act as the template. Click Next to proceed with the wizard. Type My Model as the file name of the model. For our demo project, we are using a blank model as the template. A blank model is exactly what it sounds like. Nothing is defined. The other templates provide a predefined structure for the project with packages and predefined diagrams. The templates also provide building blocks, which are predefined elements and combinations of elements that are most used in that type of model. Notice the service design model. This is new in version 7 of the Rational Architecture tools and is used in designing services and applications using those services in a service-oriented architecture. We can create a default diagram in our new model, and we'll go ahead and do that. We have a choice of a few different diagram types for the default diagram, but we'll choose the freeform diagram. The freeform diagram gives some flexibility in the types of UML elements we can put on the diagram. Now we can click Finish to complete the wizard. We're not going to use the generated default diagram, so we can close it. This is the model editor. This is where you can edit properties of the model itself, such as a list of documentation for the model or references to other models. In the previous version of the Rational Modeling Tools, this editor had to be opened for the model itself to be opened. This is no longer true. You can close this editor and still work on the model. We'll close it here. A package is a UML element that can contain other elements and is useful for grouping closely related model elements. We're going to add a package to our model. Right-click My Model, select Add UML, Package. Replace the default package name, Package1, by typing Sample. Then press Enter. A new main diagram is created with the new package, and we can now begin to build our model. Click anywhere in the Diagram Editor. The action bars have been much improved in version 7 of the Rational Modeling Tools. They are more responsive, quicker to appear, and contain more options than in previous versions. You can also use the palette to the right of the diagram editor to create UML elements, and you can use the context menu or right-click. Select Add Class, the icon second from the left, on the action bar. This creates a UML class with the default name of Class 1. Replace the default name by typing My Class, then press Enter. In addition to the action bar for the diagram editor as a whole, UML elements have their own action bars. Let's add an attribute to our class using the class action bar. Hover the mouse pointer over the class, and when the action bar appears, select the add attribute icon. Replace the default attribute name by typing my attribute colon string. Notice what happens after you have typed the attribute name, and then type colon to provide the attribute type. As soon as you type the colon, a pop-up appears with known types from which you could select the attribute type. As you continue typing, the pop-up zeroes in to show only those types that match the letters you are typing. When you are done specifying the attribute type, press enter. Now let's add an operation to the class, but instead of using the action bar, we'll use the context menu. Right-click on my class, Select Add UML, Operation. An operation is created with the default name. 
change the operation name to My Operation and press Enter. Now let's save our model. Select File, Save All. I'm going to move my class a little higher on the diagram so I can put some other model elements below it. We created my class using the action bar. Now let's create another class using the palette. Click the class diagram drawer on the palette. Then click class. Creating model elements from the palette uses a sticky drag and drop. You don't have to hold the right mouse button down and drag. Clicking on an element loads the cursor and you just move it to the diagram editor and click where you want to place the element. A new class is created with a default name. Replace the default name with my associated class 1 and press enter. Now let's create an association between my class and my associated class 1. Scroll down in the class diagram drawer to display association. When you see a drop down arrow next to a model element in the palette, that indicates that there are multiple types of that model element. We want a directed association between our two classes, so we'll click the drop down and select directed association. An association is a type of connector. When drawing a connector, you drag the mouse pointer from an element to an element. Notice the circle with the diagonal slash at the bottom of the mouse pointer. This indicates that the mouse pointer cannot be used because there's no element to be connected under it. When the mouse pointer is over an element that can be connected, the pointer changes to indicate this. When the pointer is over my class, click and hold and drag the pointer to my associated class 1 and release the mouse button. When drawing a connector, do not try to draw from edge to edge. You only have to indicate the from element and the to element by dragging the mouse starting anywhere in the from element and ending anywhere in the to element. The tool knows to draw the connector from edge to edge. Now let's look at another way to create a connector and the connected to class in one step without using the palette. Move the mouse pointer over my class in addition to the action bar, notice the two connector tools that appear, one pointing towards the class and the other pointing away from the class. These tools allow us to create connections to and from the class. Click and hold the connector tool pointing away from the class. Drag the mouse pointer to an empty spot on the diagram and release the mouse button. A menu appears from which you can select the type of connector you wish to create. Select Create Directed Association 2. The submenu that appears lets you select the type of element to be created on the to end of the connection. Select New Element Class. A new class is created with a directed association from my class to the new class. The new class is given a default name. Replace the default name by typing My Associated Class 2 and pressing Enter. Notice that while we changed the name of the class, the role name did not change. We can fix that. Use the mouse to select the directed association. Notice that the mouse pointer changes to let you know it is over the connector and that the connector can be selected. The properties for the association are shown in the properties view. Use the scroll bars to make the role property visible. With the role property visible, select the current role name and type My Associated Class 2 and press Enter. Now let's arrange the diagram to look a little nicer. Right click anywhere on the diagram and select Arrange All. Finally, let's save all of our work. Select File, Save All. This completes the UML modeling demo. In this demo, you saw some of the capabilities available for building UML models using the IBM Rational Modeling Tools. You saw that the modeling features are easy to use and provide multiple ways for accomplishing a task, so as to give you choices and to fit your way of working. For additional resources, visit the following URLs.